four years, Nazultan Nazobayev has been used to performative adoration from the citizens of Kazakhstan. The country's leader for nearly three decades, he was showered with praise and adulation at showpiece events, and his image smiled down from billboards across the country. When he stepped down in 2019, he was able to choose his successor, Kasim Jomart Tokayev, and kept significant power as head of the Security Council and general behind the scenes power broker. He retained his official title of Elbazi, or leader of the nation. Astana, the capital city he ordered built in the heart of the Kazakh steppe, was even renamed in his honor. To Nazobayev, it must have seemed like he had found an answer to the problem vexing aging autocrats across the region, how to step aside in old age without risking retribution. Vladimir Putin and others were doubtless watching with interest. The events of the past few days might suggest that different lessons should be drawn. Statues of Nazobayev, meant to be monuments to his legacy, have been torn down by protesters. Instead of chanting Elbazi, many angry Kazakh protesters are now chanting Shulket, or Old Man, out. Discontent at poverty, inequality, and corruption led to increasing unrest in the country in recent years, and much of the anger is directed at Nazobayev himself, who for so long appeared untouchable. Among Central Asia's vicious and repressive autocrats, Nazobayev always seemed the most nimble. Born in 1940, he rose through the ranks of the Communist Party and became Kazakhstan's first leader on independence. He managed to hold the country together during the 1990s and later to avoid the extreme repressive violence of his peers in Uzbekistan and Turkmenistan, while also avoiding the revolutionary sentiment of Kyrgyzstan. When 16 people were killed in 2011 protests, he solicited advice from Tony Blair about how best to spin the violence. He charted a delicate geopolitical course in the years after Kazakh independence, remaining friendly towards Russia while also courting Western leaders and energy companies, who turned a blind eye to the lack of democracy and instead focused on securing lucrative contracts in the country. Western lawyers, accountants and advisors helped the new Kazakh elite invest their fortunes in London mansions and Swiss villas. His daughter and grandson are believed to own £80 million of London property. Nazarbayev also engaged a steady stream of Western architects and urban planners to build his new capital city. In 2010, Nazobayev, perhaps with one eye on the clock, ordered scientists to investigate the creation of an elixir that could prolong human life. Eventually, it seems, he accepted the inevitability of the human aging process and announced in 2019 he was stepping aside. Last year, the director Oliver Stone made a hagiographic film portrait about Nazobayev's time in office named Kazakh. History of the Golden Man and numerous statues to the retired leader were erected across the country. Now, his image has become a lightning rod for discontent. On Wednesday, Tokayev announced he was replacing Nazobayev as chair of the Security Council, and there were rumors on Wednesday that Nazobayev might leave the country for medical treatment. It is not clear yet how the unrest in Kazakhstan will evolve, and what role Nazobayev will play in them, but it seems certain that the events of the past few days will alter the historical legacy he had imagined he would leave.